and we've been up in the sky for a little bit with these drones. Now let's dive underwater and talk about MIT and the Office of Naval Research uh, traveling up to the North Pole with some Arctic submarine drones. Um, and Let's zoom out just a little bit and talk about how submarines travel. They basically use sonar, um, which they send pings of sound, and they measure how long it takes that sound to travel back, and they use that to locate where it is, to look for obstacles, to look for other ships underwater. But what that's really dependent on is the characteristics of the water that it's in. And there's this unique phenomena in the Arctic Circle now with global warming where warm water is mixing with cold water, and basically all the science that we know right now about how sound travels in water is being thrown out of the door because of this warm and cold water mixing in the Arctic Circle. Dude, I, I think I read like an article about that. Is it like Bay Bayfort's lens? Is yeah, that what the it's Beaufort called? lens. Beaufort lens. There you go. Yeah, it's like what sound travels four times faster in that area because there's like a little region where the sound waves get trapped between the smoothness of the warm water and the cold water. Yeah, Is that right? Exactly. So okay. In See, the Arctic stuff. Circle, with the with global warming, basically sound's been traveling four times further than expected because instead of gotcha. bumping into the ice at the top or bumping into the bottom of the ocean, it's been bouncing between these pockets of hot and cold water, and sound travels really far, really fast, and they don't really understand how this works. So what MIT's been doing to help the Navy, they created an uh, autonomous underwater vehicle, AUV, basically just a submarine drone, that they put underwater and they also installed a bunch of buoys at the top near the ice cap and what they did is they drove this submarine through the water and they pinged these buoys to locate where it is and then it also used sonar and collected a bunch of data about the salinity of the water the temperature of the water the current that it was in the pressures basically to understand all the characteristics of water and use the buoys as a backup system to say, hey, this is where I actually am, and try to correct the algorithms that we're using now with sonar. So they're for navigation, like the buoys are there to navigate. Yeah, exactly. So the buoys okay. are like training wheels. They're using it to navigate now, and the hope is that moving forward, they won't need to install a bunch of buoys every single time you want to send a submarine under the Arctic ice cap. They're just using them as training wheels now, collecting a bunch of data about how sound travels in the water. So hopefully they have an algorithm later to say, I'm in this water with this level of salinity, with this temperature, this pressure, at this location. This is how I can expect sound to travel. That's pretty cool, man. That's yeah. really cool. And I guess it's just to make exploration around the Arctic areas, or I guess the North Pole easier. Right? Yeah, well, so specifically in the North Pole, this phenomenon has been occurring a lot with the hot and cold water mixing. Um, and they also say with the ice caps melting, there may be new trade routes or new routes for ships to travel in. Basically, the Navy wants to be able to put submarines up there, leave them under the ice caps for long periods of time, and be able to accurately locate them. That's really cool. And it's well, like a, a cool, happy story, I guess, for this MIT uh, location algorithm. They actually, while they're in the North Pole... They had a really bad ice storm, and they like mm -hmm. basically lost this submarine drone underwater. And they had to use their location algorithm to go find it where it was stuck underneath the ice. And they were able to accurately locate it and cut open the ice to pull it out. So like, in terms of practical applications of use of their technology, it worked right out of the box. So that's exciting. I'm, I'm happy for them. I, I would have been heartbroken if I spent that much time and energy on a project just to lose it because of some inclement weather yeah exactly that's, that is a happy story 